First, a word about the FAA again. Flight Test, in cooperation with a couple other people, have put together an incredibly useful survey form, which there's a link to in the description below. Please, please use it. It is so easy to put together your response or a comment or whatever to submit to the FAA. And it's also, you submit it to Flight Test. And so a lot of you might think that, what is my comment going to do? How is this going to help? We don't have a leg to stand on. The FAA will just do whatever they want. There's nothing we can do to argue back. And I was actually in that camp, but the more and more I researched it and talked to people that are actually in the front lines trying to change things, trying to improve things, the more I learned that the FAA just do doesn't know we exist, doesn't know what we do, doesn't know how we do it, and they're just lumping us into all of the DJI white phantom whatever flyers or mavic flyers and so they just don't appreciate that we exist and so what your comment can do is give flight test some lobbying strength as well as letting them know that we exist and that's the value of your comment it takes five minutes don't be emotional this is not something that you will get in the face of the fa and say what are you trying to do you're not going to take away my freedoms i'm going to fight for my right and whatever and do whatever i want don't do that remove emotion and just explain what you do, how you do, and why it's important to you. Let's talk about ducts and ducted quads and cinewhoops and all this stuff. I have for a long time not been a fan of ducts at all. Uh, I'm still not really, but I do appreciate their value because they can, they can help an <laughs> drastically underpowered quad sort of work a little bit better, maybe but you give up a lot of other things in the process as well. And before talking about flight performance and whatnot, let's actually talk about how a duct works. So this entire, this is like a summary of Bruce's video. There's again, a link to that video in the description below. It's an awesome video. You should watch all of Bruce's videos. And um, so yeah, let's talk about how a duct works and how, how, how it does what it does. So a very abbreviated version. I'm gonna somewhat assume that you kind of remember how, or you may have known at some point in time, how a wing works. And so let's look at this duct. And the and it's very important to make the distinction between a duct and a prop guard. A duct will have sort of a curved shape to it, <clears throat> essentially an airfoil in a circular shape. So if we take this, this ring, turn it on its side, forget about the top half, and just take a cross section of the bottom half, you're gonna see a curved airfoil design that is very much like a plane wing and it very much works like a plane wing. If you take this shape and move it through the air, you will get air flowing faster over the top of the wing than on the bottom of the wing, and you will generate lift in the form of a difference in uh, pressure, pressure difference over the top and bottom of the wing. Now take that airfoil, run it in a circle, and turn it upright, and now you get a wing that's in a circular shape, which is a duct, very important duct, not prop guard, and duct will have a certain effect to it as well. This particular kind of design will give you, if you have a prop or whatever inside and you have air rushing through the middle of the ring faster than going around the outside of the ring, you will once again create a differential in pressure and that will cause this ring to generate lift of its own. That's right, the duct itself will be generating lift. So in essence, you will generate more thrust for your input power, input whatever. But it's very, very, very important that this is designed appropriately and is tuned appropriately to work. And for the majority of things out there, they are not. Like this is one that is um, somewhat, sort of like a duct-like effect or uh, look, but it only somewhat works like a duct. And you're getting a lot of efficiency loss in the form of, ex of extra energy you're putting into the system to try and just move air through this hole rather than actually generating lift from the system itself as a result of moving air through the actual duct. And so let's not talk about that. Let's actually talk about how, what this duct can do for us. So first of all, let's before moving on, look at how this thing moves through the air at an angle, not a 90 degree angle, because that may actually benefit something like a plane. But if you're moving at an angle, you get air rushing faster over this lower portion of the duct, which is very helpful in generating even more lift on this lower portion. But then you also get air ruffling the, the, the flow of air, ruffling the ability of air to move in cleanly through this top half of the duct. So you get a negative pressure or not negative pressure you just don't get as much improvement in pressure on top or differential in pressure so what this ends up doing is uprighting the duct 
And that's nice and all for something that is just a one duct system. But in a quad, we have four ducts and we have to stay at an angle a lot of the time. So we're moving in a direction. And for the most part, you get a net zero difference in this effect, maybe. That's really a pure guess because we don't really know how the the vectors are working with the wind and how all this. It's just very hard to assume or guess how this is working out. And so that's essentially how a duct works. Now, this particular duct that you're looking here is designed by Stan FPV, and he is currently the only one that I have seen that is genuinely doing research on tuning these ducts for mini quads for this specific purpose and that is actually really interesting and even though i'm not a fan of ducks this is a very very interesting matter and i have had these ducks forever literally three months and i just have not gotten around to them so sorry to him so sorry to the other people that i have there are things that i just have not gotten around to but i'm starting to get around to them slowly one by one so he has specifically designed this duct to have a tuned effect. And that is very, very important because as I showed here, this thing is not tuned. It sort of has a duct-like effect, but it doesn't really work <laughs> that great. If you look at something like this, this is more of a prop guard. It's not really so much a duct. Now, this is actually designed to work upside down because it's a prop guard. It's not really a duct. Now, there is... so. When you put something like this in a mini quad system, you do get a net increased thrust and you're not really inputting more energy, maybe just a little touch more because of some various other things. And there is a second way that this works to our advantage as well. And that's the, so if you look at, I didn't bring any example props out here. So if you, if you look at a prop and you know, like the uh, racecraft props or a lot of props these days will have a little winglet on them. That winglet is to to separate the top air, the air on top of the, of, the, of the propeller from the air on the bottom of the propeller. Because as, that, as you go down the blade of the, of the whole wing of the propeller, you get to the end where the high pressure and low pressure mix. And that is where noise is generated. That is where, um, that is where a, a difference in pressure is generated. And you lose a lot of efficiency when you have that mixing of the, of the wind, which is called a vortex. So, what this duct does is essentially separate the top from the bottom. And so you don't have that mixing of the vortex at the end of the actual winglet of the prop end. And so this only works if the, if the actual propeller is very, very close to the duct. It can't be kind of far away from the duct. And if you look at this, you can see that there is kind of a space around the edge here and i'll talk about these propellers in, in a little bit as well but you can see that there's kind of a space at the edge here and that may or may not be a small enough space to have the appropriate effect but i can tell you that this quad is hell loud so i'm gonna guess that it doesn't do enough to separate the top from the bottom and as a result you're getting a lot of efficiency loss and as, as a result this quad is not terribly efficient it's not really inefficient but it's not really getting the maximum effect of this duct system now if you look at stan's stan fpv's duct design he has done something very specific and very important as well this duct is designed for a three inch propeller and if you look the actual bottom ring of it the uh, the bottom half is smaller than a three inch propeller and what he provides is a bunch of little pads to put under the motor to lift your motor up such that the prop is just barely off the rim of the duct itself and as you can see here you can clearly see that the prop would not fit if it, if the motor was sitting any lower in the duct and this gives that improved effect and it's actually scraping on this side of the, of the duct as well and this gives an improved effect of separating the top from the bottom so that is another way in which these ducts can be tuned and produced to work the way they do now let's talk about the actual performance of having a duct on a quad. First off, the observation is that having a ducted system like this makes the control of the quad very wonky. And that's a very nondescript word, but what that means, what I mean by wonky is that the quad tends to not want to change altitude. If you give it a lot of thrust, it kind of takes it a little bit of time to kind of like pop out of this locked altitude level. Or if you try to descend, a lot of times you just can't descend and you have to wait 
to descend because your throttle's down at min and you're just waiting for this thing to fall. Yaw is not really affected all that much. However, you have a, it is affected, just not as much. I'm not gonna go and get into yaw very much, but overall, the main issue is your altitude control as well as some roll pitch issues. And so th that's the observation. Here is the guess, pure guess, pure assumption, pure intuition, just guessing how I think maybe it's working and why we get this sort of locked effect. So if you have this duct and you have a propeller on the inside and you spin this propeller up, you don't get the duct effect right at the beginning when the propeller starts spinning. After maybe a second or so, after the, the actual thrust starts flowing and it starts sucking air over the edge of the duct, then you start getting the duct effect. Now, if this is already generating thrust, thrust consistently, so if you have a consistent amount of air moving through this duct, if you want to slow down that velocity of air moving through the duct, how do you do that on a quad? We essentially don't have ways to slow down air. You can stop the propeller, but that's but the propeller is very aerodynamic. I mean, air can just flow around the propeller. It's not really slowing down the velocity of thrust. I mean, we got a lot of drag and stuff all over this place, but it's not really slowing down the velocity all that much. So I think the reason why we can't quite in increase or decrease altitude or just change anything in the in the in the movement of the quad is because we can't necessarily speed up or slow down the velocity of air going through the duct quickly enough to our liking and that's why i haven't been a fan of ducts but you do get more thrust out of the system and if you are running a cinewhoop style thing with a gopro hero 8 on top and a 12 1300 milliamp 4s battery you have something that is five six hundred maybe even more grams all up weight on a three inch system and that <laughs> that's just not just not that great it's just not going to get great performance out of that but with a ducted system you genuinely can create a significantly increased amount of thrust to offset all that extra weight so in essence you can potentially get a little more performance but that's a it comes with a big caveat with with this whole issue of not being able to change altitude or pitch roll yaw all that i mean yaw is not that big of a deal but pitch and roll is a little bit of annoyance it's it's a little bit delayed it doesn't quite feel like you are used to with a typical mini quad but you can get improved utility <laughs> that's a good word utility for a system that you would expect to be too small for the amount of load you're putting on it and that utility comes in the form of improved thrust to actually be able to lift your cow of a quad as well as potentially improved efficiency. Now, efficiency is a big question mark because with a duct, you are also adding a significant amount of weight to your quad. Now, pitch roll performance aside, this duct itself, which is very lightweight, shockingly strong for what it is. I mean, th this thing has been very well designed in my opinion. It, he's done an incredible job to, to like optimizing these things. But this duct still weighs 16 grams without the little TPU protector on top. And that means you're adding 64 grams of weight to your three inch quad. That is almost an entire hero session. It's hard to, hard to justify, hard to justify. And then this kind of a duct is actually six grams, but it doesn't really have much, if any, quote unquote duct like effect. It's more of just a prop guard for some improved safety and I'm not even talking about safety in this video, but the whole concept I had previously for things that were like this was just having something around the props make this, makes the quad look a lot safer so people aren't as afraid when you're flying around them. Please note that this is still a mini quad. You still are flying chainsaws and you can hurt somebody. So you have to be very vigilant on the sticks, on your disarm switch. If you are flying around anybody, even if you're using a super ducted system, even if it's got a cage on it on top like this, please be careful if you're doing these kinds of things. I know I'm kind of, kind of walking a fine line with what I'm talking about here. I'm trying to be very um, safe and not kind of propagate to bad, bad habits. But yeah, 
So having these ducts will be six grams per duct and you will add about 24 grams of weight to your three inch quad that already weighs too much. Or you can add 64 grams and see if you can get any improvement in thrust performance and then deal with the control and throttle issues. Another caveat, a lot of people prefer that locked feeling because if you are trying to get like a smooth, flat, straight shot, it does help. You can kind of wobble the sticks and it doesn't really change your altitude. It really works really nicely if you're doing things like that and you're just kind of like yawing around. So now I'm going to move to actually my little test field, which is just an empty lot down the street because there ain't nowhere to fly in LA anymore. And that's another reason why I haven't been able to make videos in a long time. I'm trying to be very, very safe with everything I do. And uh, I have only put ducts on one side of this quad. I also have a five inch quad with uh, four inch ducts on it. Uh, Stan FPV also has six inch ducts for six inch props, which is crazy. But uh, I'm gonna fly this quad with only ducts on one side to show how much of an effect, just how much of an effect it actually has. I also am gonna fly the five inch, it's actually a prototype quad, so I'm not gonna show the frame in detail. This is another prototype as well, but uh, let's see how this thing performs with ducts on just one side. Again, this is a test. All this is backyard science, ain't none of this true. <laughs> but as for all those people that are gonna complain, ain't none of this true, you can say whatever you want. I'm just presenting some findings and observations. This test alone will show just how efficient these ducts are at generating improved thrust. All right, so here's a quad. And I've already done this test, and this is why I based the whole video around this, uh, because I don't have thrust stands, and I'm not even a thrust stand kind of person. I try to do things in the real world and see how the effects change. And so what you're gonna notice is that this quad with only ducts on one side is going to be creating a significant amount more thrust on one side so much so that i will not be able to descend so keep a close eye on my throttle stick here so the quad will not really descend nicely oh my god I actually have to pitch down. I'm at minimum throttle. Minimum throttle. And I can't get it to descend. And especially in a forward, oh shit. <laughs> it's literally taking off on, oh my God. I literally have to, oh my God. Oh. Okay, so you can see how insane the effect is of having the ducts on one side particularly in motion. And you can also see how incredibly dynamic everything is as a result. I need to put it down because it's uncontrollable if the throttle gets too high. Whew. Whew. Okay. So let's go pick up the quad. And so here's what was happening, or at least my best guess as to what was happening. The quad was making a whole lot more thrust on one side, and as a result, it was trying to compensate by increasing the throttle on the other side to match the throttle. Okay, so I've now put all four ducts on here, and let's see how it flies. So one thing I noticed right off the bat is that this thing is way quieter than other ducted things that I've flown. I would guess that that probably has a lot to do with the fact that the props are much closer to the duct than otherwise. But I have actually surprisingly good throttle control. It does still feel a bit locked, but I am actually getting no, it definitely still has that locked throttle feeling, but it's not even remotely as bad as the other things that I've flown. Now, efficiency is not something I have tested. I have not flown this thing long enough to test efficiency, but the added benefit of having ducts is that you also have prop guards. I'm just gonna keep flying this battery. This is a 1300 milliamp 4S battery. It might take a long time to end, now, I don't have a GoPro on here or anything else, so it's not really a heavily loaded system. 
so I'm not really taking advantage of that extra thrust, but this is flying very nice. Way nicer than other ducted systems. And look at that, I was able to descend fast enough to dodge that branch. So this is performing significantly better. Now there's still some wobbles and some issues. Oh shoot, that was definitely an instance where the ducks took over. Oh, pitch and roll is still very weird. Let's try that again. Not bad. It takes a little get you getting used to, but it's not terrible. I'm actually quite impressed with how smoothly this is performing. Let's test the, well, I'm not going to test the pop guard ability. Ooh. Well, there you go. It definitely sucks in things. So what have we learned from this test? Well, if you ask me, the main thing that I learned is that ducting of quads is very much in its infancy. There is a lot of areas to look at and to see if we can actually benefit more than we already somewhat are from the ducting of quads. The design of the duct is very important, and I would point out that these two quads, one from iFlight, one from Hollybro, <clears throat> these two quads are very much inspired heavily by the Shen Drone's squirt. Yes, I am fully aware that the squirt exists. Andy Shen did do some work on figuring out that ducting of mini quads, three inch and whatever size, can work to generate more thrust than not having the duct there and Chinese companies have straight up ripped them off as they often do and I'm working on like a little series video to explain this but FPV doesn't come from China they just take everything for their own financial uh, benefit they don't actually create in some ways sometimes they do but this is an instance where they have just taken and these designs these quote unquote duct designs are not really t tuned to be ducts. They are pretty much replicas of the first version of the Shendron squirt ducting or initial design. What Stan is doing is very different than what has been seen at this point, or at least what I have seen at this point. He is specifically tuning his duct design, both the airfoil, the height, the way it works, everything about the ducts, he is tuning it to work in a specific way for a specific performance level. And I also had a five inch quad that had four inch ducts with four inch props on it, and I flew it with only ducts on one side. And the, the, the power differential of one side versus the other side at minimum throttle was so extreme that as soon as I took off, the quad went way sky high, I had to disarm, it fell to the ground, the GoPro fell off, stopped recording, and it didn't record all of it, so that's why I didn't show it. And um, yeah, so it seems that the bigger you go, the more of a duct effect you can generate, which makes sense, because you can push more air through the duct. Now, what areas would I kind of start working in to try and improve this effect? Well, first and foremost, the props. And I haven't talked so much about the props. This prop in particular is from Gemfan. It is a three inch prop that, oh, I think I broke my, oh shoot, I did break my motor a little bit from the crash. Anyways, these are Gemfan props and they're specifically designed for ducts. And you can see how the props are very much like a bullnose kind of a look. And that would make sense for a duct because you no longer have the efficiency loss of having this thick, square end on the prop so it would make sense to have very more of a, much more of a bull nose effect on the prop so that you can take advantage of the entire diameter of the prop the only other prop that i know of that has been designed specifically for use with ducts is this hq three inch prop which is the duct three it's literally called the duct three i don't know the pitch on this it looks a lot shallower pitch than the gem fan prop and something about these particular gem fan props, uh, when you're not running them in ducts, I oddly found them to be very smooth. I think that has a lot to do with how aggressive they are, because aggressive props tend to feel smooth, but actually aren't very good when you look at their um, efficiency and the rest of the performance spectrum. But I found these props to be 
pretty darn smooth without ducts on. And also another note I would make is that pretty much the vast majority of three inch quads out there are overweight. And so they're functioning as overweight quads that just generate a whole lot of thrust. And so all of these three inch props that I have, I've got a lot of them, but this is the T-Motor 3130, I oh don't know, this is the, it's a 3140, it is 3.1 inches. Uh, they all perform very similarly on a three inch quad as long as the quad is above around 200 grams or so. If you're below that 200 gram mark and really below 150 grams, you can really feel a significant difference between how the props perform, very much like five inch. But once you get up higher in the, in the weight range, in the disc loading category range, the props tend to start feeling very similar. And so with those kinds of quads, we should tend to prefer lower pitch props because we're looking for more static pressure. And in this particular situation on a duct, I'm just guessing here with based on my intuition of the aerodynamics of props and just testing a whole lot of stuff. If I was to design a prop specifically for a duct, first of all, I'd look at other planes that exist. And if you look at planes that exist, they have multiple blades in the duct because they don't have the efficiency loss of having the drag of multiple blades so you can take advantage of that effect. Now in this particular situation, based on my guess that the issue here is the fact that we can't increase or decrease the velocity of air going through the duct to slow down or speed up the duct lifting effect which causes that weird control difference and the weird throttle difference. I would say that a four or maybe even a five blade propeller might be a really good option for these sorts of ducts with a somewhat of a bull nose and maybe not a full bull nose because you still have some space at the end of the prop so you still have to account for some of that drag being an issue but with this duct in place you can probably mitigate the significant efficiency drop from having more blades and having to deal with all the drag of more blades maybe i'm just guessing here but basically i would say that this hq prop is probably a best better option i haven't actually tested it in this duct system i will test it uh, maybe maybe in a minute you'll see me test it uh, i would probably go for a prop that's more like this hq prop and just add one more blade maybe even consider a shallower pitch because we're not flying these things fast this is not intended to be flown at breakneck speed or in a race of any sort and so that's where I would first start. Next thing I would do is uh, maybe tailor the shape of this duct and the way it's designed in the sense that when you are at an angle, like I explained and like Bruce explained in his video, you should technically be getting drag on the top and, uh, uh, sorry, just a reduced or negative pressure effect on the top and a improved effect on the lower edge of the duct. So maybe if you just kind of flattened out the airfoil on the back side of this rim, you could improve the performance by reducing the potential pressure variation when you are moving forward with this duct system without significantly affecting the improvement in thrust from having the duct in place and getting that duct effect. Now, the other thing that you do need to take into account is that uh, you are adding a whole lot more weight to the quad, so you, you sort of do need to have a much more high power system to be able to reap the benefits of this thing. So most likely having a beefier motor or more powerful thing altogether is probably gonna be more advantageous when you have all this extra weight added to the quad and in doing so you improve the efficiency even more because of the beefier motor being able to spin this tiny little prop easier and you could probably lift even more weight and gain even more efficiency but now this is a double-edged sword because you start gaining a lot more weight really quickly and that can be a detriment so on another note i would also say that if you're going for the best possible flight feel without ducts, well, you're not gonna get it. You basically need to not have ducts to have the improved flight or just have no duct flight feel. You'll always have some effect if you add ducts or prop guards or whatever. But if you are gonna be going for that effect, the, the, if you are gonna be going for flight feel with that feels like you don't have ducts in place, you need to have the least restrictive ducting or prop guarding system you could find in order for that to work and the whole thing needs to be as light as possible because without the added advantage of being able to generate more thrust you 
will notice the weight a whole lot more. And having too much weight on your quad is detrimental in every possible way imaginable. Now the four inch version is not clearly, clearly not quite as durable, but not because it's not designed well, it's not durable because the whole quad weighs a whole lot more. That being said, you probably don't want to crash the three inch version either. And so let me see if I could swap these props out and um, get this thing working again to test the HQ props. If I don't, thanks for watching, floss your teeth. But if I do, here's the test. All right, so I fixed the quad, swapped out the props, put the HQ props on. So immediately the thrust is not quite, or not the thrust, the, I mean, there's a lot of wobbles. I don't know why there's so many wobbles. I think my motors are actually wobbling, but I can immediately tell that the speed is not quite as much and the altitude control is also a little bit more wonky. However, it's not quite sticking as much like the, oof. Yeah, so the altitude control is actually more difficult. It seems to be more touchy. It seems to want to take off on me. So I was clearly wrong about preferring this prop over the gem fan prop. But in general, I would assume that a lower pitch prop is going to be able to generate more static thrust, and that's kind of what we need for ducts, as far as my knowledge goes. Maybe that's not the case, but I'm just going to fly this around to see what kind of flight time I get. Oof. Definitely need some serious tuning. In general, there's a lot to be to be learned about ducts. I haven't done much testing about it. I haven't seen people doing a whole lot of actual testing on it. Yaw doesn't seem to be affected much. Next up, I'll test the weight carrying capacity of these ducts. Not quite as efficient as I was hoping. And I think as you go up in prop size, you're gonna get better efficiency because Stan actually says that his six inch quads with ducts get the same or more flight time than the versions without ducts. So that's pretty interesting, but I think the effect improves as you go up in prop diameter. So yeah, interesting tests. I would definitely work on props and the design of the duct. Thank you to Stan very much for sending me these ducts. Check out his site. And thanks for watching. Floss your teeth. Uh, I'm actually gonna be doing probably another video about these ducts as well. I also didn't talk anything about the safety of the prop guards or having a guarded prop in general. I also didn't look at the weight loading capacity and the differences and the speed and so many other things. So lots and lots of videos in this area to come if I ever get around to testing them.